Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Mix and Drums with Stock Plugins. Um, I know I got a lot of thank yous from a lot of people over the last week. And uh, well, with that, I'm gonna keep making these. So here's part two, we're gonna take a look at toms and uh, a technique called parallel compression, which I've nicknamed the Drum Smasher. This one's a lot of fun. And I hope you get something out of it. But I wanna ask you guys before we go on, what DAW are you using? Because I, I did this video in Cubase and everyone just freaked out, what the fuck, man? How come you're not using Reaper? And it's like, I've done stuff in Studio One as well, you know? I'm not tied to one DAW, I'm not tied into one ecosystem. I find if I stick on one DAW for too long that I get too comfortable and I keep making the same moves over and over and over and over again. I find it's a great idea to shake things up every now and then and just force myself to work in a different way. I mean, I worked with Sauce Studio for about a decade and it's a magnificent program, but I realized I'm getting stagnant. I need a challenge. So I switched to Reaper. So I'm currently learning Studio One and Cubase all at the same time. And I'm finding they do have some very similar features and they're pretty freaking sick. But what I want to know from you guys out there is what DAW are you using and what do you want to see tutorials on? Because I want to make stuff for you guys, not just for my benefit. So please leave a comment below. Let me know. Let's get to it. Okay, so moving on, we've got three tom channels, tom one, two, and floor tom. Uh, we're gonna pan these out first and foremost to respective positions in the sound field. And on their own, you know, they're a little muddy. In the, in the mix, they're pretty fun. Once again, it's those awesome room mics that are working out quite well. So we want to add a little bit more brightness to these guys, a little bit more punch, a little more definition so they're not quite so dull and uh, bass player like. Anyway, so we're going to go into the channel strip here and just give us a little bit of a top end boost, maybe a bit of a mid range cut. And low frequency roll off. It's just a basic EQ move. Don't want to cut too much out of here. Just want to listen for boxiness. Not quack. A little bit of bottom. Make that a little bit brighter there. Okay, that's got quite a bit of uh, definition there. So let's uh, let's throw our favorite compressor on there again. I absolutely love this thing. It's just killing it. I'm gonna go with you know medium attack. Pull down the output a little bit. Except for an auto release, why not? Now we just want to get rid of some of the other crud in there. Gate this out a little. Now the important thing here is when we're gating, we want to make sure we time the release for the tom. Maybe about 250 to 300 milliseconds for the first tom, and then you extend the release times for the longer uh, for the longer sustains of the lower toms. Like tom two will get maybe about 500 milliseconds. Floor Tom will get anywhere from 700 to 800 milliseconds, you know, so we can get that sustain. I'm going to show you guys in an upcoming episode how to treat that sustain so you can get rid of, you know, the high end from all the cymbal crud and still maintain the high end attack. It's a really neat trick I'm going to show you guys, and you can do it using nothing but the included plugins. It's pretty freaking cool. But anyway, for the time being here, yeah, we're going to go about 300 milliseconds release. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that gets a lot of that out of the way, so not bad. Okay, let's uh, let's drag and drop some EQ. All right, this episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Rock Mixing Model from Pro Mix Academy. 
It contains 15 separate lessons and over 30 hours of video detailing mixes from industry pros, Grammy winners, and you even get a pair of lessons from me. You get access to all the tracks and each lesson takes you through the mix process step-by-step step in an easy to understand fashion. If you're a fan of Metalocalypse, there's a track by Brendan Small from his Galacticon project that is pretty damn wicked. There's also a Motorhead song and even an Aquabats track. It's a lot of fun with loads of great information. If you wanna boost up your mixing skills and learn from some of the best out there, grab the Ultimate Rock Mixing Bundle today. Now, back to the show. On to the, uh, onto the other Tom tracks. Now this is just basic EQ moves. We're gonna tweak these out individually. We're also gonna do the pre, which will get the low frequency roll off going on. And again, we might want to adjust this based on the drum itself, but that's a pretty damn neat feature. I got to say, now remember, we don't have any compression going on yet. So or a gate or anything like that. You can just hear the snare smacking through those Tom mics. So let's see, where's the, uh, where's the dynamics? There's a strip command. Let's see if we can just uh, drag the gate over here. Uh, I think we gotta do the control. There, nope, alt. There we go, yeah, like I said, I just learned this last night, so I'm still messing around here. So um, let's see what we can do here with the floor tom. That's the attack is one millisecond, which we want is fast. But the release, 318, we're gonna go about 450, 500 right there. And we're going to crank that way over to about 700 there. See how that works. I'm going to bring the thresholds down a little bit here. And let's bring these tracks up individually. Let's go middle tom for a minute here. Get this working right here. Look at that. We drag and drop that. I think it's alt. Yeah. Okay, we've got our vintage compressors loaded up. Perfect. Let's take a listen. that one more time here that's pretty cool there we go that's pretty beefy now now this one needs a lot of work still we definitely don't need that much high end on the on the top. We need some more bottom here. We need to play with that gate a little more. Let's EQ this first. One more input. Just bring that up a tiny bit. Hear that in a mix. Still sounds like the first time can come up just a touch. And again, that's probably... Uh, in the output here. There we go. That's starting to hit. Middle Tom.
Now, you can hear that gate on the first tom. It sounds like it's not quite getting through on the first couple of hits there. That sounds pretty interesting. Pull that down a bit there. A little bit more top end on the middle tom. But a little more attack through on this tom. A little bassy there on the second tom. Yeah, these are starting to hit pretty hard, pretty cool. Get a bit more zing going on this floor tom. Get some boom going here. Wow. I'm gonna go over here, just tweak this a bit. Still think, yeah, you know, we could just EQ this up a little bit better on the second time. It's a little muddy still. I think we got, got the toms happening there. So there we go. Um, just a little bit of refinement, but, uh, pretty slamming overall. Gotta say, let's, uh, let's take a look here. Let's take a look at the whole mix. So there's our toms in place. So it's really just three faders we can grab here and tweak out as we see fit. Okay, so we've got things sounding pretty interesting so far. Uh, what we want to do next is use a technique known as uh, parallel compression. And so what we're going to do is we're going to send all the close mics, the kicks and the toms and the snare mics into one bus. And we're going to call it the drum smasher. And we're just going to literally smash the living piss out of the drums and we're going to bring that up into the rest of the mix just to kind of give things a little bit more zing. Um, this is where we get to have some fun. This is where it gets rude and we're going to add an effect track and we're just going to call it drum smasher. And there we go. And so what we want to do, we want to go into our, there we go. And we want to go into our mixer here and we want to add some sends. Um, I'm going to see if we can send the affected kick and snare into this. Let's see if we can do a send here. Let's see what we get. We want to go to drum smasher. And I think we have to send this post fader. This little button right here. Let's move that over here. There's a little button right here, pre post fader. Let's see what happens here. I'll make sure it's turned on first and foremost. Let's see what we get. That works both ways. Cool. Uh, 
Excellent. Just got to make sure it's turned on. So right here. And this is where we get rude. So if, I'm wondering if I can just drag that send over here. How cool is that? Wow. So we want to do the same here with, uh, with the, with the toms, with the three toms. We want to send post fader here. We're just going to click these over to drum smasher. Like, so we're going to send those out, make sure these are all active and let's take a listen. Sounds like there's way too much kick drum into that. Fortunately, it's really easy to deal with. Now we're getting everything, you know, in a stereo in the stereo field correctly anyway. So that that's a big plus. There's a little more too much kick in this, so we're yeah, you can see it's all the way up to six, so we don't want that. that first time just a little down a little bit so i'm just kind of mixing what's going here just by playing with these faders right in here and now that we've got that set up let's pull up the compressor and you guessed it <laughs> let's get aggressive with it so we're gonna set this to 20 to 1 fast attack fast reliefs and just get rude with it pull down this a bit So we just want to pull this up. Now I gotta say, I love these lines, how they move when you start moving your, your bus faders up and down. It makes life so much easier to mix with. When we take this out of the mix, We're gonna have a little more fun with this. I almost forgot one of the more important things to do when you have a bus track is uh, throw on some tape saturation. Let's listen to it. Just in the interest of getting stupid with it. Let's go to Magneto. Magneto can be able to do weird things at the top end, so you gotta be careful here. Uh, it's not doing too much. Let's go to uh, the other tape saturation. It sounded a little ruder for this. Just add some drive in there. Again, we're not going for you know nice. We're looking. We're looking for mean. You know, we just want to add. That gives me a cool idea. Let's throw, throw a bit of tape saturation on, on these room mics as well. That's pretty cool right there. Didn't need much. And maybe just a little bit of correction here. On this tom here, it's still set a little bit on the muddy side. Now if you hear there's a little bit of hash going on with those cymbals. So we're gonna take a, do a high frequency roll, 
Roll off. And we're going to take, we're going to let, you know, the room mics and the overheads deliver, you know, the, the nice high end airiness. We don't want that. This is the rude channel. So we just want pure raw aggression there. Like right, right when it's just kick and snare here at the beginning. Maybe we can go with a little bit more top. Hang on, let's, wrong, wrong button. trick is to just punch in and out and make sure you're going in the right direction. All right, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to come back and look at building an artificial room sound versus using a reverb. And then we're going to look at some advanced gating techniques that you can use with your built-in plugins that will help you conquer cymbal bleed. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. And don't think that you have to drop a crap ton of money on expensive plugins to get amazing sounds out of your DAW. You might have the tools you need right under your fingertips. Hey guys, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe as I post every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. If you want to learn more about recording, check out one of my tutorials or one of my gear reviews if you want the actual honest truth about a piece of equipment. Till next time, stay metal, my friends. Yeah.